the death of Dick Long, though, is our movie tonight that we should be talking about, but I just don't have a ton to say, so that was kind of my stalling on that. Uh, <laughs> this is not a common movie, so I'll give the brief plot synopsis over here as opposed to really general thoughts, but it involves, the movie starts with this, like, this, this, this these three dudes, their names are Zeke, Earl, and, and Dick, and Dick's played by Shiner, he's played by the director, and they're in a rock band, they're like an, e- this is, this is funny, they're like an even shittier creed, uh, and es- essentially, what happens is they get, they, they get drunk and high one night during rehearsal and stuff, and then it cuts, really, and then Zeke and Earl have to drive Dick to the hospital, they steal his ID, and they leave him, they dump him. He's like bleeding profusely and they dump him outside of the ER, uh, which is kind of like, it, it kind of feels like a, almost like a psycho sort of uh, send up right there. But anyway, uh, what, what happens is though, is then it's basically dealing with the fallout of this. Like Dick's dropped off at the hospital, he's dead. And the doctors are like trying to figure out what's wrong with him. And it's an, I, I don't know how much I want to give away, like, Rectal bleeding is involved. That's all I'll say. Um, and it's weird the, that I'm smiling as I say. The, the trailer shows them playing with shows them playing with fireworks. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and it's set in Alabama. You can kind of do the rest from there. <laughs> but the 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 movie essentially deals with the fallout of this whole thing. Like Zeke. Uh, Zeke leaves his, he's got a wife and daughter and he tries his best to kind of leave them in the dark even though he's not very there nobody's very bright nor intelligent in this movie and that's sort of the crux of this there are these two like police officers who I think are probably the best characters they in the are, whole damn yeah. thing Sarah Baker and Janelle Cochran they're kind of like Fargo they, like this movie's I, I I we messaged this thing yeah right? we, we were we messaged a little bit about it last night and Joe said Southern Fargo and I said stupid Fargo that's that's really what this is it's Fargo but everybody's an even and bigger it's, moron it's already kind of a redundant <laughs> it, it, you know, I mean everybody's even dumber than in Fargo like but but anyway that's sort of the the premise of this so it's kind of like a backwards ass detective story because like you like we don't figure out totally what happened to dick until about halfway zeke and earl are trying to cover this up and like dump the car dump the car in the marsh and they're terrible at covering this thing up so the police poke holes and everything again he they took dick's license you know so they're trying to cover this up they're trying to cover the ignominy of his death up in such ridiculous ways but the the, here's the ironic part though the way i just described this this movie is not really a comedy this movie and i think the thing that i i didn't vehemently dislike this movie but i think the problem with this movie was at the end of the day is its tone is it's the the it it's got a lot of tonal shifts to this thing and about the 50 minute mark it goes to try and play this thing very seriously, very seriously. Like almost in spite of its ridiculous premise, it tries to ground this in reality. And it seems almost like disassociated with itself in a way. I, I said a lot there. I gave the plot synopsis and kind of already went into critiques. I'm all over the place. Shut me up, Joe. What did you think of the death of Dick Long? Um, so again, I, I, I don't know if we were on air while saying this, um, maybe we were in the green room, but like, this was a movie I thought I saw because this came out in 2019 and I've never seen trailers for it because 2019 was a hot streak for A24. You had The Lighthouse, you had Uncut Gems, and Midsummer. Oh, wow. Um, I yeah. mean, you had those three movies from that and that's not including the other movies they had in 2019 as well. I mean, like, hell, if I were to go to the Wikipedia page, there's plenty more, like, there. Under the Silver Lake's another one. That was, like, you know, a very limited release. The Last Black Man in San Francisco, which didn't really get a wide release. It got a very, very limited release. So there's a lot of cool stuff that came out in 2019. Uh, Waves was another one that I saw that was really good. Um, so I thought I saw this movie. Turns out, I think I just saw the trailer so many times like going to see an A24 movie that I just was like, oh yeah, I've seen The Death of Dick Long. That's a good movie. <laughs> Cause, like, it's I got just... the black and gold and the muted color palette and yeah. everything and the very handsome production. Like, yeah, no, this fits in their repertoire very nicely. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, The Farewell. Like, that's another one too. Jesus Christ. They were on a hot streak that year. Um, So I just saw a ton of, like, ton of stuff that like, they put out that year and it was like oh man like 
I guess I saw that movie. It turns out, yeah, I, I think I just saw the trailer ten times. Now, actually seeing the movie, I realize it's like, I definitely didn't see it. But I kind of wish I did because I had a good time watching this movie. Um, it, Steve is right um, in terms of its identity of what this movie does want to be. I did kind of feel that towards the, ha- the the reveal of like what went down leading to Dick's like death. It does take a shift and you do feel it. Um, but I feel like after that, it kind of goes back to being a dark comedy. It's just like within this like 20 minute like sphere of like everything going down it's being revealed a character's life is kind of going in shambles um it kind of just bounces back to being like a dark comedy and everything i think also what doesn't help too is that like zeke is definitely like um who's played by uh michael abbott jr he's definitely played as like the straight man throughout this movie like the character we're following the most and everything but he has earl to bounce off of who's played by andre highland and earl's just a I hate to use our one F word, even though sometimes we break this rule all the time, but he's a fucking idiot throughout this movie. <laughs> um, every time he, you think like, like Zeke's just being stupid, Earl will one up him and Earl just will not realize how stupid he'll, he'll be. He comes in smoking a vape and he'll be like, damn dude, that like sucks. Like, you know, I wish I could help. But it's just like, bro, you're part of this situation. Like, why aren't you like more like aware of like what's going on and everything and the tone doesn't like play up to that like to his level of character you know mm-hmm. what i mean like like how stupid it doesn't sell how stupid he is because of the self-seriousness around it um i do feel like in scene like when it seems with those two like there's a scene where he has to go drop off zeke's daughter at like the kindergarten uh that she goes to or first grade whatever it is and like he's talking to dick's wife who's a teacher at this school um and like at this point dick is dead in the movie he dies like in the first like five minutes um he, yeah he does the, die that's yeah, not a spoiler yeah <laughs> the movie's called the death of dick law it's in the it's in it's in the damn title <laughs> um <laughs> and there's like a point like you know he's like having a conversation with her and just the way he's handling it like you could tell like this dude like just has no sense of like social cues nothing he does not know how to carry himself he doesn't know how to and i mean this all in like a good way he's doing such a great job of, at a performance I'm just laughing my ass off at it. Like, he literally reminds me of, like... So, in Fargo, you know, we have, like, the the, the husband um, that, like, gets his wife abducted and everything. But if you watch the Fargo TV show, uh, this character... Uh, oh God, I already forgot the name. Earl. It just reminds me of more of, like, the characters you see on the TV show who are just oblivious to the crimes that they're doing uh, and just don't care at all. Uh, and I, I kind of like those characters a lot. And I thought the interactions between him and Zeke were some of the best parts about the movie and unfortunately like the first half to me the first half of this movie to me is really good not to say the second half isn't bad i did enjoy it but earl leaves halfway through the movie and he's just gone um and it kind of just feels like the like energy that he was bringing to a lot of scenes and just like kind of like oh i can't wait to hear what he says next uh it just kind of leaves with him uh and like no one really replaces him in that sense and it just becomes it gets a lot more depressing <laughs> in the second half too despite it still being a dark comedy there's just moments where it's like oh this is kind of messed up and sad <laughs> um but that being said i did still enjoy the movie um it, it like you know it's out of a24's catalog of movies i'm kind of just like yeah it's whatever like you know it's like i've seen better from a24 even though they're not the, like the studio that like you know really creates this movie they just you know publish them uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass it off to Dom real quick. I really enjoyed this movie because I, even though I share many of the same critiques, but I don't think they bothered me as much as you did, Steve. Because Particularly because in that second half, which I do agree is not a strong, but the thing that got me is that, yes, it does get very dramatic kind of quickly. And it it gets very family drama. You know, this marriage is seemingly falling apart. They're yelling at each other. There's some very intense close-ups here. You break mental breakdowns. But the thing I think that it makes it that it, it, the joke of it all, the crucial thing of it all, is what they discover about the main character, yeah. which is such a pivotal thing. It, like that is the joke. And we can't, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it, even though this has been out for a while. I don't want to spoil it because I don't either. that is the joke for me. Um, that even though they're having all this fam, like intense family drama, like a lot of it classic, like, you know, 
get out of the house, you know, break some glass. And he's like, you know, whatever, uh, you know, frustrated washing of dishes. It's the overarching joke that is like hangs in the background of all of that. The situation itself. That was so funny. And the re the reveal is hilarious with the parallel scenes of the hospital and him <laughs> trying to explain to his wife what happened. That was great. That was fantastic. Um, and then everything from there, it's like, yeah, no matter how straight we play this, this happened. And you are going like that is that just that's a fact of life. This dude died because of this. And I think the I think the intention is that yeah, this is going to be the joke for the rest of the movie. Like, rather, this is going to be the thing that propels their, like, how, like what carries the humor for the rest of the movie. And it's surprisingly effective. Not as much as I think they hoped it would be, particularly for that long. Um, but that's why I don't think it bothered me as, Steve, your critique, which I do agree with. And especially, like, the last, like, five to seven minutes where they're doing like the wrap up and like, here's what's happening with all the characters. Yeah. It's, it shows a lot of heart at the end there, but we kind of lose a little bit of that. And it plays with some dark, like how dark it wants to get. It's dark straight away because, you know, some dude dies. Um, and you know, the, you know, they have to deal with this, with this death. And it's like, Oh my God, are we going to charge with murder or something? <laughs> um, but, but mostly it's, it's just from the beginning, uh, you know, after the title sequence, after that, it's just a spiral downwards, and that it's like a it's a it's a uh, car wash, a uh, car collision, it's a car crash in slow motion, and it's like, when is it gonna fall apart? How is it gonna happen? These two are freaking idiots, which is why if if you're someone who is bothered by illogical people in movies, don't watch this movie <laughs> because you're just gonna tear your hair out. To me, it's to me it's to, I mean. It's totally excusable because yeah, you know, it didn't bother me. Yeah, not at all because it's an accident, and also this is set in. It's set in Alabama, and it's like a the movie small town Alabama. They let you know. I, I don't mean to be prejudiced against rural folk and people from Alabama, but this movie drives the message home that this is in Alabama because there are just random shots of like people doing just mundane seemingly stupid shit around like it's, town. it's a no, it's a nowhere to stop light town yeah. where everybody knows everybody there's like no career opportunity whatsoever 100 you yeah. know what i mean and like you just you just get the sense that like you know it's i always say to quote the great to quote the great country artist luke bryan born here live here die here <laughs> my, my uh my favorite totally. shot in the movie just to kind of set the tone of how this town is is that there's a woman mowing her lawn and it, her lawn has like a really steep hill that leads into the street and in order to mow that lawn, she ties up like a rope around the lawnmower <laughs> and lowers it down the lawn and then pulls it back. Which, on. but that kind of shit I like. That's, that's awesome. Those, those little, it's just like <laughs> those. I'm not shitting on that. I'm like. not shitting on that because people do that, and it's kind of ingenious. It is. But that's so much. That shot has so much character. It really just does. In and of it itself. really does. And you know, and and you know what I saw, I said early, like to myself watching that is that like those little and i get the movie can't all be background b-roll over here but those little scenes and those little fragments of this area i liked a lot because you know what it reminded me of and this is heavy praise for a movie i'm not going to give a very positive review to but that little shot right there reminded me of gummo harmony corrine's gummo uh his very first movie which i don't think you two saw uh, which is about, it's a long story short, it's about a fictional town in Ohio called Xenia. And it basically, it's shot documentary style and it's and made on no money. And it's actually in this like rural impoverished community. A lot of these ca actors aren't even actors. They're playing pretty much themselves. And it basically shows you this town that was devastated by a tornado years ago that never fully recovered. And like all of its residents and like just the weirdness of it. But it has like a certain... Like it, it falls in between like irony and dark humor and like also an appreciation and fondness of the area. Gummo's a weird. I highly recommend it. It's really strange. There's a there's a great that scene of that woman. This is gonna make no sense to you guys having seen it, but the one person that's seen Gummo watching this will get it. That scene of the woman pulling the lawnmower with the rope to cut it down that like long hill that slope 
reminded me of the scene in Gummo where this where this boy takes a bath in like filthy brown like Flint, Michigan water, and there's a strip mm. of bacon taped to the wall. <laughs> That's what that reminded me of, and it's a beautiful scene in the whole goddamn movie. I'm telling you, you gotta you watch Gummo. You gotta told watch me so Gummo. much right there. About you gotta the watch Gummo. It's a masterpiece. Um. But the you know what I, I want to give credit to Matt uh, Matt Sipola of um, the, the the website the Spool because you know what I did was like I was like because I'm not gonna write a review of this I'm gonna let this uh, let this episode serve as the review of this uh, with your guys' opinion too but uh, what I did was uh, and this probably isn't the healthiest thing to do as a critic but I did this like I I, I kind of wrapped my mind about around it after I watched it and how I felt about it and how I was like really mixed to mediocre feeling about this movie so i went over to rotten tomatoes and i went to like the negative review tab and i'm like why does everybody else can somebody concretize why this movie didn't do it for me and matt and matt sipola of uh the spool did it really well uh he he one of his lines i won't read the whole thing but one of his lines he says in this thing he says it's like in, in his review it's like hanging out with a movie seeing stuff happen but not quite getting involved and that's a hmm. perfect – I feel like that's a great distillation of how I felt, like within arm's reach of a movie. And like, it bothers I, you. You don't, like, you don't like that. Yeah, and, and again, it's not like I vehemently dislike this thing. Right, right, right. But, but I that, almost, that I almost felt alienated by it. I almost felt alienated by it, and I guess I can't say – you didn't see Swiss Army Man, D, did you? You know, I really wanted to, but I didn't. And that just seems like it's right up my alley. And I wasn't crazy about that one either. I famously, I, I think I said in my review when we did every, we did a review of everything everywhere. I said, for the, I distinctly remember it. For the first 20 minutes watching that movie in theaters, I thought I was watching the worst movie of the year. <laughs> I really huh. did. I really did. I fucking hated the, like the first 20 minutes of it. I couldn't, buy, I was like almost like almost like this like disgusted by it like not the premise and everything but just the execution and the weirdness of the whole thing but then it got better because it went on to get sincere off of its absurdity and the death of dick long does a very similar thing but i just don't think sells it well enough and i don't think it's ever like swiss army man was funny was like effectively funny at times and it went on to have like a greater, not only have like a sincerity at the end, but like a greater theme. I didn't love it, but I but I understood it a little bit better. Where this, I don't know. I never found it very funny, and I never found it really interesting outside of the way it was shot and the way it was filmed, which I think again, which I will say again, is very handsome. Yeah, it's this this movie to uh, taps into a certain spectrum of humor that i enjoy which is just this crazy thing happened and we're going to keep like it's the impetus for everything yeah and the first half it makes it a mystery the second half is just the the fallout of it all i mean all of it is the fallout of the incident but particularly once you know what happened and it's like this is so ridiculous we're going to bank on that joke and that to me makes me laugh i'm the kind of person that will just like yeah that really just happened like that was a thing that happened in history like like <laughs> like G germany really thought they could take on the world in in the second world war that was just a thing that they thought they could do i think that's a norm mcdonald joke it's like yeah they thought they could do it twice and they that's, almost won that's, that's that is total, a, that is a norm mcdonald joke that's totally like, a norm mcdonald yeah. joke and like, it's it's just that kind of humor and that kind of thing that's the stuff where like even like the the surface jokes will make me chuckle but then just the meta of it all will just make me Cry if this if, this if this premise of this movie was a, a bit by Norm Macdonald, I think it would be a goddamn masterpiece. <laughs> you know, like, you know, oh, absolutely, one hundred percent. I would love, I would have loved. And, and that's to, a hey, huge chat compliment GPT, to Daniel. Chat GPT, can that, that's, you? Uh... <laughs> that, that's a huge compliment to Daniel Schneider, Schneider over here, and the and it is. Billy Chu actually. Billy Chu's the writer of this. Give credit where credit's due. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a huge credit because yeah, they, they, I didn't put that connection though, but. Yeah, there is a there is a decisively like Norm Macdonaldish thing going on over here with like almost anti humor and like a ton of exposition and like yeah, here's the punchline. That's yeah. the punchline, casually even, delivered. Even in its most dramatic, serious, straight moments, 
this happened to Dick Long, and it's <laughs> it's god damn that made and his name that, is Dick Long. Exactly, the irony of that is so good. The <laughs> title that's this is the one of the best titled movies I've I've seen in a long time. I only um, I I really admittedly only laughed. I, I only like really the audibly laughed once. on Wikipedia. The poster's so great. Good. The poster's really good. Um, I, I, I said everything like visually related to this movie, I think is great. I think is really strong here. Ashley Connor did a phenomenal job with the cinematography. Um, but the the one joke that I did audibly laugh out loud to is is it the cop? I think it's the cop mm-hmm. who doesn't know that that Dick is short for Richard. Yeah. I, I, that I found funny, and then where that goes, like where where how do you get how how do you get Dick out of Richard? Yeah, <laughs> ask his wife. Cool. You know? <laughs> like that, like that is that that I laughed at. I'm like, okay, the movie needed more. That's such a, a trope too. Or such a trope too. Beat shit. That was. I mean, the whole thing's offbeat, but it needed some more of that, like effectively dry wit. Yeah, yeah, it, it's such a trope too because it's like usually it's something mundane. That's like a pivotal. It's like. Oh yeah, uh, you know, it was it was Sorman on on Wednesday, but whatever. And then it's like, wait a second. Usually it doesn't. I think it was something mundane that triggers like the. Yes. Oh yeah, this is the pivotal piece. But no, it's like it's that stupid ass joke that that does it. It's like stuff like that that you're right. I wish it had more of. And I wish, like Steve, what was your opinion on the character uh, Earl, which is who's just like the dim witted half of the of the duo? Yeah. And Did again, you like him? Like, was he annoying to you, or was he? I, was I he wasn't funny? annoyed. I I wasn't really annoyed. I just felt like neutral. I was more neutral, but I also I just felt like his character, like like his performance. I think I think the 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 performer in question too, um um and, uh, Andre Highland. I think that his performance is pretty good. The problem is the tone. He almost feels like he was plucked out of a different movie in some cases. Dude, okay. like he like he feels like he's dragging it a like dragging it more to the comedy side, but the tone, but the surrounding tone doesn't match his performance. I had no yeah. fault with him. I just felt like you know if this movie was a tad was a touch funnier and a touch more like 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 humorous or like comedic in a in a drier sense like the whole dick richard in a mundane sense like you were saying right. i think he would have been more effective i think he's i think he's just failed by kind of a, a a movie that just doesn't know what tone it wants to adopt this is a this is a very tough that's a very tough thing that is i the, easily the biggest problem of this movie that we're all i think we're all coming to conclusion here and that that's that's such a difficult thing to handle as a director it is that that whenever whenever we have that criticism which we have kind of semi often it's like that's i don't even know how to relate to that because that's such a macro thing you have to have so much foresight such clarity of vision uh and it's Probably like it's you can shoot yeah it can be in the edit yeah you could be doomed from the shots themselves yeah. and it's like dude if you shoot all that and then like in the edit you're like oh my god i don't know how to do this it's like i don't know if we can save this in the edit and it's like that's or like save the tone or you know, have the consistency in the edit that's so hard i i i well, i think i almost when, when i was watching the credits i think i almost found out like i can't it like it was a slight revelation of like okay again i didn't love swiss army man really liked everything everywhere all at once like most people before it got nominated for a million awards um but uh i you know i when i was watching the credits i was like you know what what if Shiner wrote this? What if he wrote this? Because he didn't write it. It, it, it. He didn't. He was not the screenwriter oh, okay. of this. I said Billy if he Chew. if he wrote this, and it, like it's it's mark it's markedly similar to Swiss Army Man. It really is. Which I, I see similarities see, in everywhere. I I see why I see why Shiner directed this. I can totally mm-hmm. see that. But like I wonder. I'm like, if he wrote this, I think it might have pushed this over the edge a bit. And it would have had so more of a clarity of vision too, like, like that. That's just what I think. And Billy Chu, and I don't, I, I, I don't, I have, I don't have his filmography in front of me, but he doesn't have a Wikipedia page, so I can't imagine he's done a ton that's been super noteworthy. I don't want to pass off judgment, but I'm just saying, uh, like I, I, I really would have liked to seen the version of this that was written by Shiner, that was written by the director of this. I think that would have been better, especially since Schneider at this point, Shiner was at least half established after Swiss Army Man. 